Good morning and welcome to Kenya and to the Maasai Mara, more specifically to the Mara Triangle. My name is Brent Yersmith. I have the very talented expert on camera with me today. And we've got Daniel making sure I don't get lost or do anything silly. Now, we found something quite special that I know a lot of our long-time viewers have been asking about. Are we going to see it in the Mara? The answer is yes. Without further ado, over my shoulder. Now, we have a pair of secretary birds on a nest so this is very exciting it's definitely something we can keep an eye on and see how that chick develops we can't see whether there's a chick in it yet but the fact that both adults are there there could be an egg there could be a chick but this is definitely something uh, we are going to keep an eye on over our time in the Maasai Mara isn't that very very exciting now of course this is ideal habitat for a secretary bird nice long grass Lots of snakes and lizards to trample. And they have a very varied diet and, and quite a big home range. Now, and they can have home ranges depending. I see, I don't know about the Maasai Mara. They probably have a, a much smaller home range in the, in, the, in the Maasai Mara than they do for, in the Greater Kruger. In the Greater Kruger, they can have up to five, five to 6,000 hectare home ranges. But of course, it isn't the most perfect ideal territory or, or habitat like they have here. So there we go, they're just waking up. They're probably going to head out foraging in the next little while, but I couldn't resist uh, showing you the secretary birds on their nest. Isn't that so cool? Remember, use the hashtag Safari Live um, if you've got any questions for us. And it looks like they're doing a little bit of aloe grooming at the moment. Um, so they do mate for life. So you can see that affection between the adults. Uh, it's, it's very important that they, they maintain that, uh, that, whoopsie, radio, that affection and it'll make for a strong pairing and then normally a very good parenting pair isn't that just so cool now i'm sorry i'm just got to move around to get my bum down now i think one has one sat down eggs oh it flew off sorry while i was turning around uh, so as I said, there it's about the time of the day we're going to head out foraging. Lillian's wondering, um, are there seasonal migrants here? Uh, yes, and quite a few of the same seasonal migrants that you're going to see at Juma. So the cuckoos have left Juma, but they are here at the moment. We can hear red-chested classes um, and Deirdre's cuckoo all around. So we do have seasonal migrants. There's also quite a few seasonal migrants that we're not going to see at Juma. And that only come as far to this uh, as to come to this massive grassland and we will be keeping our eye out for those as we meander through so today is quite an exciting day we're exploring areas we haven't been to before um testing our signal and stuff like that so if you don't see too much of us today we do apologize but we need to get it all figured out before this weekend isn't that just oh now eggs if you go directly above the secretary bird and slightly to the right there's a couple of dots that look like look like rocks and some of them are rocks two two of them are buffalo can you see them there we go so you can see there's some ravines and, and thickets up along the escarpment and the buffalo bulls tend to or quite a lot of buffalo bulls tend to really really like that area now there's also a pride of lions that live in this area uh, called the Sausage Pride. A sausage Pride, that sounds like a funny name for a pride of lions, but it's, it's because they like to sleep under sausage trees. And uh, well, we've got our, our local expert with us. So Daniel, how many lions in the Sausage Pride, more or less? Well, there are three females. So three females and, uh, and five cubs. Uh, so while we are going through this area that we haven't really explored yet, we will be keeping an eye out for the Sausage Pride. Now this area, not too many people come to it this time of the year because the grass is very high. But you know, we've always got a bit of luck, don't we eggs? So we're going to hope we're lucky today. Sometimes it's better to be lucky rather than good. Okay, so we're going to start meandering on again and uh, see what else we can find. But that secretary bird nest is a really, really nice find. And I'm just, let me just do a quick, quick scan along the escarpment with my binoculars. See if there isn't a lion lying under a rock or under one of those 
balanites trees. Or as we've seen in this area, even up in the tree. Now there's a couple of interesting species that we're going to be looking for um, in this area that we haven't seen and, and I don't think have ever been seen on the live drives. And one of them is a boha reedbuck. Uh, which occur in the long grass and obviously quite hard to spot at the moment But we will be doing our best to, to try spot them and also in certain parts uh, we might see orabi So lots of cool things to look forward to but unfortunately only those two buffaloes and the secretary bird sitting in that spot Oh Chris is wondering, what is the water supply um, for this area? Well, Chris, it's actually quite quite fascinating. So in South Africa, we only have one rainy season. Here you have two rainy seasons. You have the small rains and the big rains. And um, a lot of the water, uh, and this is what we would probably call an inundated area. So in the, in the middle of the big rains, or if it's rained recently, there's no ways we could drive here. We'd be stuck for days. So... This side of the Masai Mara, up against this beautiful massive escarpment, gets more rain. So there's a lot of little streams and seeps that come out of the escarpment and eventually flow down into a big swampy area that's behind us, which is part of the Mara River floodplain. Uh, and also, of course, there's the Mara River. But there are lots of seasonal pans and swamps and seeps uh, uh, that are all natural. So you don't have any dams uh, and like you do in, in other parts of Oh, what's that? Sorry. In other parts of Africa, where my binoculars gone? Something just moved. Oh, whatever it was, it's disappeared into the grass. I think it was a topi that I just saw go past. But, um, yeah, so Chris, lots of rain and rainwater, so lots of seasonal swamps. Uh, and, of course, the, the lifeblood of this area is the Mara River itself. So it, the river, as it, as it meanders through, up in the, the northern area, we've got the forests. But as we're, the area we're going to this, 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 this morning, hopefully we will have signal there, is, uh, is a lot more open and, and the grasslands come right up to the edge of the Mara River. Now, we've been talking about grass, and uh, let's go across to Taylor, who's someone who's walking through grass at the moment on Bushwalk. 